Today's review is brought to you in collaboration with our friends over at the DJHookup.com. Do your, um, your headphones look like this? Like a rat's nest of nonsense? Aren't you tired of that? Aren't you tired of putting the jack in just right and holding it at a right angle and twisting the adapter and making sure that it sits in the controller just right so that you can hear both full stereo channels when you're trying to beat match? Do you know how easily something like this gets caught up in my luscious locks? I'm tired of it. Today we're talking about the Alpha Theta HDJ F10TX, and this is a set of wireless DJ-based headphones from Alpha Theta. You know, us DJs have for a long time probably been like, you know, it'd be nice to not be tethered to my DJ equipment whenever I'm doing a mix. You know, it's starting to feel like that's a little old school. But the problem with wireless headphones in DJing has always been latency. In other words, there's a delay between what you do and what you hear, usually, when it comes to wireless technology. Alpha Theta wants to solve that problem with their Sonic Link codec. This is the same thing that they put on their Wave 8 speaker, for example, that lets you shoot sound to the speaker from your controller wirelessly without any noticeable delay. And that's what they're trying to do with headphones here. Now it comes with a transmitter in the box so you can use it with anything, but it also has support for the XDJ AZ built in. So we're gonna tear into this thing and see if it really holds up to its claims. I'm David Michael, and this is Passionate DJ. You know, it's a bit crazy when you think about it, but you never really see wireless headphones in the DJ booth, do you? And unless you're John Digweed, you probably, you know, move around in the DJ booth. Animated DJs create lots of opportunities for snags, tangles, and yanked gear. If you've ever turned your head to talk to someone and had your headphones go flying off, you know what I'm talking about. But the issue with wireless protocols, for example, the Bluetooth SBC codec that's so popular, is almost always latency, or lag. So in other words, the time it takes for you to hear something after you do something, like push a button. Alpha Theta's solution to this is called Sonic Link. This protocol is 20 times faster than Bluetooth, bringing the latency all the way down to 9 milliseconds, which is close to imperceptible. So this means you can monitor, mix, scratch, and cue just as if you were using wired headphones, and that's a game changer for the DJ booth. The HDJ F10 headphones do indeed work with Bluetooth, however, which is great for other modern headphones things, like listening to podcasts or taking phone calls. Like other high-end headsets, it includes a noise-canceling mode to block out noise and a transparency mode to pump the sound back in. And so with all this in mind, the HDJ F10 can be used anywhere outside the DJ booth. Using the included cable, you can even use them as traditional wired headphones. In the box, you'll find a very nice carrying bag and a pair of replacement ear pads. You can buy the headset itself for $389, but to get it with the Sonic-Link capable transmitter costs $499. Now currently, the only device that supports the F10 headphones without the transmitter is the Alpha Theta XDJ AZ, as it has one built in. Now whether you're interested in the headphones, the transmitter, or the XDJ AZ, you can find the answer to all of your hardware needs at the DJHookup.com. Now, of course, they're the sponsor of today's video, and thus, they're the reason I'm able to bring this video to you. My viewers love the DJ Hookup thanks to their quick response times, great selection, friendly service, and free shipping on most orders. In fact, they've told me so in the comments. They offer financing options and a generous return policy, so you can order your DJ hardware with full confidence. And look, if I can tug at your heartstrings for just a second here, Supporting an independent retailer means that you're voting with your dollar for the passionate small business owner rather than the corporate warehouse overlords. So look, they didn't tell me to say this, but it's true. As a business owner myself, I always want to see the small team of hardworking experts succeed. And that's what you get with the DJ Hookup. It's a brand backed by active DJs like you and me with support from industry experts right in the chat bar at the bottom right. If you're not quite sure what piece of gear you're looking for, their friendly team is ready to point you in the right direction. And hey, you know, maybe let them know that David from Passionate DJ sent you. Look, we've been working with the DJ Hookup for a couple years now, and for me, this means that I can make hardware reviews for all different manufacturers without being biased or paid by any one of them. I love that this helps keep me honest while still supporting a retail brand that I do believe in, because 
The DJ Hookup sells DJ equipment to their friends. It's that simple. So let's talk a little bit about the features and usability of the HDJ F10. Now the headphones offer a similar suite of features that you'd find on other upper end consumer level cans. Alpha Theta was smart to not lean all the way into DJ headphones. You know, today's users want today's features, and those are basically found here. So by sliding a small switch on the left cup, you can easily decide whether you're using Sonic Link or Bluetooth. With Sonic Link, not only do you get that low latency connection, but you get a little bit more transmission distance, about 15 meters versus 10 meters, and those are unobstructed distances. Obviously, those will be less if you have walls and other things in the way. Now, one major difference is obviously that the Sonic Link headphones will only pair with the included transmitter or an XDJ AZ, whereas you can pair to any Bluetooth capable device using that. And then there is a battery life implication as well, but we will talk about that later because I had some really surprising results there. But thanks to the built in microphone, the F10 is capable of handling phone calls when paired to your phone in Bluetooth mode. But the onboard mic isn't just for taking phone calls. Like other modern headsets, you can use active noise cancellation to filter out incoming noise. Or you might enable transparency mode to let external sounds back in. Now this lets you continue having conversations with people around you while listening to music or whatever. Now you can enable or disable these functions using a dedicated button on the right cup. But these features only work in Bluetooth mode. Now, the quality of these features, well, it's worlds apart from my AirPods Pro or any other high-end headphones that I've tried. The noise cancellation is barely noticeable, and the transparency setting is also barely noticeable. It's not great. But the physical sound isolation of the headphones is very good, so thankfully it's not really a deal breaker. They sound really nice and quiet in there, but don't expect it to compare to other similarly priced headsets. It doesn't. Now, the appropriately named multifunction button is used to do several things depending on when and for how long you push it. Hold it for about two seconds and the headset turns on. Hold it a little bit longer and it turns off. Now, you can use a really long press, about five seconds, and it'll enter pairing mode. Once the headset is in pairing mode, you can do a similar long press on your transmitters button. They will both flash, indicating that they're paired together. And this process is basically the same whether you're using Bluetooth or Sonic Link. Now currently, the only other device that supports the Sonic Link protocol is the Wave 8 wireless speaker, but that doesn't pair to the HDJ F10 stuff or to the XDJ AZ, which has its own transmitter. So just keep that in mind. I tried some failure tests with the headset and actually it fared quite well. I would step outside of range and it would drop but then as soon as I walked back, it would immediately reconnect, no problem. I'd say that their claimed range of 15 meters on Sonic Link is pretty accurate. As expected, the more, you know, obstructions and Wi-Fi signals you have nearby, the worse your range will be. There's a small onboard LED to indicate connection status, as well as three dots indicating the battery level. Volume controls are also included. All right, so let's talk about that latency thing. So with Bluetooth, audio latency is approximately 180 milliseconds. And that's like an eternity when it comes to describing audio lag. And it can actually be a little better or worse than this, depending on the level of, say, post-processing that's being done by noise cancellation or anything like that. Now with Sonic Link, it reduces this time to 9 milliseconds, which is fast enough to make it unnoticeable. So that means that actions like hot cueing, scratching, or scrubbing through tracks sound just like they would if you were wearing wired headphones. To show the response time, I shoved my microphone into the headphones so you can hear what it sounds like to cue in them. And as you can see, it's very responsive and loud free. I found that the F10 headset was reasonably comfortable for long-term use, though at 356 grams, which is just shy of a pound, you will feel that weight after a while. The adjustability is good. The headband is angled slightly rearward, and both sides have a nice kind of ratcheting action when you set the height. 
The cups swivel, but only slightly. They're perfect for that one cup on, one cup off thing that I like to do, but it's less ideal if you like to do the hold the headphones upside down and listen to one side thing. With both cups on, like normal headphones, they fit over the ear and don't make me sore quickly like on-ear ones do. I was able to clock in a few hours before like feeling I needed a break. Generally speaking, the headset is comfortable, if not a touch heavy. Sound isolation of the HDJ F10 headphones is quite exceptional without much help from active noise cancellation. The ear cups form a nice seal against my head, providing great volume and bass response at all times. Now according to Alpha Theta, even using this fancy high-speed newfangled protocol, these headphones will get 9 hours of battery life. I didn't want to just trust that for myself because I'm a man of the people, and the last thing that I want to be accused of is being some sort of dirty pioneer shill. I decided to go ahead and take the headphones on my daily routine for this nine hour adventure. So I brought the headphones with me while I was doing the dishes. And cleaning the kitchen. I should have known from the start. And brushing my teeth. And of course, feeding my ducks. <laughs> Why? Why? I provide for you! Why? So at the end of the day, how long did it take for me to actually wear out the battery on these things? Well, it didn't take one day. This experiment took three days. Well, it just kept going and going. After about 18 hours, it started saying, battery level low, every few minutes. But I had to go to bed. Twice. So at the end of the day, here's the final result. Now, to be fair, I probably kept the volume a little lower than you would have it in a loud club, but I also kept it further away, about 10 feet away for most of this process. The receiver itself gave up the ghost after almost 11 hours, at which point I just plugged it into a USB-C charger and it kept going indefinitely. 32 hours <laughs> when they're claiming 9. So I don't know why they're 4xing what their claim is, but uh, color me impressed. I honestly truly wonder what these will do on Bluetooth now, since they claim that it'll do 30 hours with Bluetooth, but... I honestly don't have time to run that test. So let's talk a little bit about the sound quality. Now this is something that's always really hard to talk about in a review because it's always gonna be subjective. So here's what I'll say. The F10 headphones will get as loud as you want them to get. Whether you're using them wirelessly or with the included cable, I never had any trouble getting these things to bump. The audio itself, to me, sounds quite lovely. Audio reproduction quality is good, and the bass is kind of emphasized a little bit, as you might expect and want from DJ headphones. With the cups covering my ear and forming that little gentle seal against my head, the isolation was sufficient to make it sound like I'm in a quiet room, even without any active noise cancellation going on. Higher end sounds are produced with clarity and without harshness, while all the mid-range still comes through when listening to music made by humans and instruments. And like other Pioneer DJ audio gear that I've reviewed, you can find a little bit of hiss if you listen really closely for it, but I never found it to be distracting. Now to be clear, these are not meant to compete with audiophile grade headphones, and it's not going to blow your mind in this regard, but they do sound very good, and they get loud in loud environments, which is perhaps the most important thing with DJ headphones. But I did also test making phone calls with a headset on, and everything sounded crisp and clear on both ends. So these things are really nice, but I do have a small wish list. And honestly, my primary complaint is that, you know, active noise cancellation and transparency modes are just bad. And while that's not really the point of these things, DJs will certainly be looking to use this as their main set of premium headphones outside of the booth if they buy them. And maybe a little more swivel on the cups would be nice. You know, not much, just enough to do the upside down single cup thing. I'm happy that they swivel enough to wear one cup on and one cup off though. These aren't the lightest headphones around, but that might be inevitable due to that incredible battery life. The ability to use the headphones while charging them would be nice, though I'm not sure if this is something that other full-size wireless headphones offer anyway. It's more of a nice to have. 
Again, the headphones will always still work the analog way, using a cable. But overall, you know, the biggest issue that Alpha Theta faces here is that we need more Sonic Link compatible gear. In order to buy into this idea, we kind of need assurance that this won't just become a dead standard. Now, including a transmitter in the XDJ AZ was a great step in the right direction. But imagine if they start including them in their flagship mixers. You know, if the next DJM A9 or V10 has these transmitters, it'll be way easier to convince DJs to opt in. So with all that said, the Alpha Theta HDJ F10 seeks to solve a real problem in the DJ booth. You know, having a wire tethering your face to a mixer really just feels archaic in 2025. If you are an early adopter type, this is a great time to pony up and show the company you want low latency wireless tech in the DJ booth. But if you're not, well, Alpha Theta has at least future-proofed the headset by making it work with standard Bluetooth protocols as well as with the hard wire, so in the absolute worst-case scenario, these always will still be really good headphones. But whether the DJ market will support this shift into a new wireless technology does remain to be seen. Now that said, I'm happy that someone is addressing this latency issue, and this is a company well-poised to introduce this new tech. And at the end of the day, the HDJ F10 is a comfortable wireless headset with incredible battery life and very good sound quality. It just so happens that you can supercharge its performance using a SonicLink transmitter. So folks, that's the HDJ F10 TX. It's a mouthful, but they're pretty good headphones. And if you want to get yours, you can get yours at thedjhookup.com. What do you think of this foray into a wireless audio technology that Alpha Theta is doing? Do you think it's going to catch on? Do you think it's worth having a little dongle or something, a little transmitter hanging off whatever you're using to be able to use this? Let me know what you think in the comments below. But for now, this has been Passionate DJ, and as always, keep on spinning. <laughs>